Hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, in this video, I'm going to be dropping this little tree right here uh, for a future project around camp. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to do a felling video since I'm going to be dropping this tree anyway. Uh, it's a nice dead, has been dead for quite some time, a uh, nice dead Virginia pine. And it'll be really good for uh, the building project that I've got coming up and around my camp. So that's what today's video is about. Um, so yeah, stick around and I'm going to drop this tree. So I should mention uh, verbally, I had it written out on screen, uh, but I should mention verbally, using an axe is inherently dangerous, right? There's risk involved with swinging around a sharp piece of metal that's on the end of a stick, right? Um, and felling trees, dropping trees with an axe is in some ways the most dangerous thing you can do with an axe, because uh, if it goes the wrong direction, you know, it could fall on top of you, it could fall on top of something that you don't want to break, right, or crush. Uh, so, be careful when you're going around dropping trees with axes. Um, also, um, there's really not always a huge need to drop a tree uh, for any kind of bushcraft camping thing, uh, in this region anyway. And in other places, yeah, that might be a thing you need to do more often, but here in the southern Appalachians there's a lot of dead wood on the ground almost everywhere right if I pan the camera around you'll see there's a ton of wood laying on the ground uh, but I want this log this pole specifically so that's why I'm dropping this tree another thing to keep in mind is if you are dropping a tree check and see if anything's living in it right because uh, something might be making better use of that tree than you would if you put it on the ground. Uh, back in the winter actually I was going around looking for firewood and, and project trees uh, to drop and, and get some wood from. I found an ash that I really really liked and I went up to it and I was checking it, gave it a couple taps just to see how stable the top of the tree was and out jumped a flying squirrel from a little hole that was in the top of the tree so just keep that in mind when you're dropping trees um, you know other things use them too but nothing's using this one that I'm aware of uh, there's not even a whole lot of woodpecker holes in this tree interestingly so it's a little soft right there Give that a few wax looking pretty good there are some branches above my head on this tree uh, so I want to make sure that those are not going to easily come down while I'm whacking this and hit me in the top of the head so, looks like we're good to go. So I'm going to take this mask off and put it in my pocket so I don't lose it on the ground. Now then, uh, first thing to keep in mind when you're going about dropping a tree is which direction you want that tree to go. And this one is up against this living Virginia pine and I don't want to damage that so I'm only going to be chopping from one side. And we'll get into that later on in the video. Uh, I'm going to be finishing this off with a saw. Uh, and there's another tree right there. And there's one right here. And it can't really go that way because there's, there's too much foliage up in the top of those trees. So I'm going to be aiming this tree right here. All right, so that's going to be pretty much going out to my left there. So I figured out where I want it to go, right? Next is to figure out where I'm gonna go once this tree starts to fall. And I'm gonna be chopping and working from this side of the tree. So my escape route once this tree starts to fall is gonna be this way. Uh, rule of thumb kind of is a 45 degree angle away from the direction of fall, right? So if it's falling this way, I wanna go 45 degrees out to either side back behind the tree. That's ideally the safest way to go uh, when a tree is falling. Uh, if this was a single tree, uh, I definitely would not want to go straight out behind it. Right? When a tree falls, the bottom of the log can shoot directly past the top of the stump and go that way. I've had that happen before, so you really don't want to be behind the tree. It's not ideal. 
Um, and since this is next to another tree, if that were to happen and it went backwards and hit this tree, it could shoot off to one side or the other. So I'm gonna to wanna to put even more distance between myself and this tree than I might normally do with a solitary tree that I'm dropping uh, that's not near anything at the base. All right, so that's two things. Third thing is to make sure there's nothing in the path of the ax, right? I'm gonna be swinging this way, so I'm gonna make sure there is nothing in this whole circle right here, All right? And I'm good to go there. There's a tree behind me, but that's fine. It's not gonna be in the way. I'll just leave it as is. So, that's three things. A fourth thing is your position relative to the tree while you're swinging the ax. Now, I was involved a lot with timber sports when I was in undergrad, um, and if you're not familiar with that, that's basically um, professional chopping events, if you will. I was not professional, I was collegiate level, um, but it's a, it's a competition on chopping. Uh, one of the competitions that is often done in those, comp in those uh, timber sports events is called a standing block chop right and you'll you'll see a lot of people set up to do a standing block and they'll stand like this right they'll get their axe and i'll come back this way and that's usually the first swing i'm actually a little close that's usually the first swing right there coming up toward the bottom uh, that a lot of people will do some people start on top but i've seen a lot of people start from the bottom that is a very common this stance right here is very common in timber sports put your foot your leading foot which is whatever side you're most dominant I'm swinging uh, left-handed here um, actually I said that backwards it's the opposite of whichever side you're swinging from I'm swinging left-handed so my right foot is forward right seems to work quite well uh, with the competitions I don't like that however because if I were to miss glance whatever leg is right in the path of the axe so I don't do that um, I actually don't put a foot anywhere near the tree I stand this way so I'm swinging left-handed so my left foot is in front my right foot's behind me and I've got a lot of room here where I can work right now this could glance and come back toward my left leg that is true uh, but if you've got enough distance and your swing and your arms and everything are, are coordinated enough if that were to glance it's probably going to go this way right because you have both hands on the axe so it's not likely to come this way uh, in my experience it's more likely to go this way so my left leg is is fairly fine what i'm more concerned about is following through this way because that's the direction of the swing right, that's completely open there i can swing that all day that leg is perfectly safe back there so, now we've got positioning out of the way. Uh, the height on the tree where you start chopping can be a thing. Usually, I just chop wherever it's comfortable. Uh, some people like to go down low and they will chop like so. That's fine. Um, me personally, if I'm chopping that low, I'm going to squat down and hopefully I'm still in the camera frame, but I'm gonna squat down and by squatting down, uh, that makes it even safer to swing the axe. Because uh, if you were to glance, miss, whatever, uh, the ground is a lot closer to the axe than you are. So that's really probably one of the safest ways to chop is by kneeling down. But this is what I tend to do just because it's comfortable. And the more comfortable you are, generally, um, I find the accuracy and precision increases. Right. So this is what I'm going to do. I've figured out all of the factors. Um, uh, one I didn't mention actually is when you're figuring out the direction of fall is to look and see how much resistance there's going to be of that tree falling through the foliage. Um, don't have to worry about that as much during the winter, but spring, summer, fall when there's leaves on the trees, um, it doesn't take a much of a branch to slow down or stop a falling tree. Uh, with those leaves on there so that's another thing to keep in mind but got all that figured out I know where I want the tree to fall 
So now I'm going to start chopping here. And I'm gonna start right there. And that looks pretty good. That should work out all right there. So I'm gonna give a few chops in here from the top. Just like that. Get, up, get that all broken up real good down in there. And that's really more than I needed to do from the top for right now, but better safe than sorry. So now I'm gonna come in directly into the tree and knock out all of those chips. I have seen a lot of people when they're dropping a tree keep all their swings relatively at an angle so they'll start here and they'll work their way up making the notch bigger. Um, I don't like to do it that way. I like to do all of my angled cuts from the top and the clean out cuts at the bottom of the notch pretty well straight in. It's been a while since I've swung an axe. I uh, mentioned in the previous axe video I did that uh, I had some arm injuries. This is actually the first tree I've cut down with an axe since before that happened. And that's been uh, about six weeks ago, I guess. Five, six weeks. My accuracy is diminished slightly, unfortunately. Accuracy with an axe is very much a perishable skill. You gotta practice it all the time. Now with this size tree, um, normally I would probably, let's get that in a little bit further on the bottom. That's normally probably about where I would stop on the the, the first notch here, the face cut if you will. Uh, but since I can't swing the backs from the back, I'm going to go in a fair bit deeper than I normally would, uh, just so there's not much to work with the saw back there. And this tree is not very big, so making that face notch go way back in there shouldn't be much of an issue. Um, with a really large tree, uh, you do want to be careful how deep you make your face notch. Uh, if you go too deep, the weight pulling that tree toward the direction of the notch can make it just fall whenever it wants to, uh, which can result in a barber chair, which you definitely don't want. Barber chair, uh, the barber chair effect is, is very dangerous uh, and not ideal. But I think with this size tree, I should be pretty well fine with the way I'm doing it here. And another thing you should do while you're chopping on a tree is keep an eye on what's happening above your head. Um, I am stopping to look every so often just to see what's happening up there, but I'm also listening to what's happening above my head. Um, It is always better to look than to just listen to what's happening up there. Uh, but with enough practice and experience of doing this, you will kind of tune your ear to listen to all the parts of the tree to see what's happening. Um, you still want to look every so often, uh, but the more you do it, the more you'll trust your ears to tell you what's happening above your head. So I think I'm gonna stop right there with the ax and I'm gonna put the mask back on my ax and get it in there. And that notch is in there pretty good ways. I'm gonna put the ax right there on the other side of that tree so it's nice and safe and out of the way and I don't trip on it. Let's see here, so 
the center of the tree is right here and I have gone about an inch past the center and I would say I'm probably about uh, two-thirds pushing three-quarters of the way through the tree uh, normally I would stop at somewhere between half and two-thirds but like I said I'm gonna be finishing this off with a saw so I went in there a pretty good ways from the front now get the saw out here and I'm gonna put the back cut with the saw I'm gonna shoot for more or less an inch maybe an inch and a half somewhere in there above this point here right so where the where that V stops in the back of the face cut I'm gonna go so they let's see here the the V is right about there I don't know if you can see the saw right here that's about where the V is so I'm gonna move up to about here and I'm gonna put that back cut in right there and I'm gonna go fairly slow through here I'm gonna try to keep that as parallel as I can uh, on the back I'm gonna keep that as parallel as I can to this line right here one thing you can do when you're dropping trees with an axe or an axe and a saw like this is you can angle the back cut slightly to make one side of the hinge a little bit thicker than the other and you can use that to kind of steer the tree as it falls right so if you've got a tree with a pretty significant lean and you want to go um, out to one side of that lean for whatever reason uh, if you put your face cut in I would say you know you got to kind of play with it but for I'm just gonna call it a significant lean if you put your right you've got your tree is leaning out this way and I'm gonna point at the camera it's leaning out this way and I want the tree to land over here right I'm probably gonna put my face cut in to aim about in the middle and then I'm gonna cut away a little bit more of that hinge wood on the lean side of the hinge and that will pull the tree further away from its lean is that thicker bit of wood on the hinge will fall slower and it'll be a lot stronger so it'll pull the tree as it falls and you'll see it it won't just go that way but as it falls you'll know you should notice it kind of does this All right so that's something you can do uh, with your with your notches I'm not gonna worry about that with this that might actually be a little bit high so about right there that looks pretty good so with this one I'm just gonna kind of try to keep it pretty well parallel and go through and the tree should start moving at any time so I'm gonna watch the top a little bit. Come on, cut there. Starting to move just a little bit. take my hand out of that loop just in case my saw gets pinched while the tree is falling I want to be able to let go of that saw because I would rather you know worst case scenario I would rather my saw take the force of the tree than me goes. Perfection. There we go. That's on the ground. I'm going to bring the camera over here 
and show you the top of this stump. There we go. So now you can see this was the face cut side there. This is where I came through with the saw. And here is the hinge right here. Uh, it's a very thin hinge. Um, generally, I'd want a little bit more width on that hinge, but that worked out pretty well. And uh, I mentioned that I was going to keep these parallel, but uh, as I was working my way through the tree and, and checking all the angles and everything while I was sawing, kind of decided to bring this in just a little bit to kind of push that tree that way as it fell. So, there we go. So, there we go. Dropped a tree with an axe and a little folding saw. And that's a pretty good sized little tree there. Uh, I could use that for all kinds of things. So, now I'm going to cut this up into uh, shorter lengths. About the size that I want to use for the project at camp. Which is just right over there. And I'm going to carry them over there. And that'll be that. Right, so now I'm going to cut this up into two pieces here. I'm going to cut it right about there. And it's a little bit soft right there. It was softer than I thought it was when it was standing. But I think it'll be alright. So, I'm going to buck this with an axe. All right? And you will see a lot of people on the internet, on YouTube and whatnot, getting up here, just kind of rolling, standing on the log, like so, and going right there between their feet. That can work, that's fine. Um, I am not a big fan of that pro uh, method myself. Um, going back to the timber sports thing, uh, that's another event uh, called the underhand chop, usually. Uh, but I don't really like to use that method. I prefer to just stand on the ground and chop through it uh, Either from one side or from both and have it meet in the middle and for this one. I'm just gonna go All the way through from this side So what I'm gonna do is stand Right here just like this kind of find the middle that looks pretty good right there And I'm gonna stand just like I did when I was dropping the tree, right? So that that follow through right there, right? Completely open space. Uh, I like to think of it as an imaginary line, if you will, that extends from that side of the log to behind where you're standing. That follows the arc and the path of that axe, right? So that imaginary line right there, I want all of my body to be on one side of that imaginary line, right? Uh, seen a lot of people do this as well and chop right here uh, maybe with their legs spread out even further like that so they're way down probably fine uh, but again I like to use that imaginary line idea and with this that imaginary line goes right underneath me I've got half my body on one side and half on the other and I just don't really like that so I tend to do just like this and chop through yeah that's nice and soft That'll still work though. Chop through there just like that. And then come over to this side. And another thing I like to do is switch hands. I swing right handed, swing left handed. Um, that does a couple of things. Uh, for one, in my opinion, it allows you to use an axe a lot longer. Uh, as if you're using an axe only left handed or only right handed. Uh, you know swinging like this and then coming around and doing this kind of thing right crossing over that and this for one is kind of awkward for me uh, but you use the same muscles all the time essentially right by switching back and forth between right and left handed swings you can split up the work uh, between more muscle groups which allows you to work a little bit longer so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to switch to a left-handed or a uh, right-handed swing here. And I'm going to make this second cut uh, in a spot right about there, probably, yeah. Right there, if I can get it to stick, which it doesn't want to do. Uh, but that spot right there, that's just a little bit wider, this area here. 
just a little bit wider than the diameter of the log. And that means that as I progress through this cut, it, that V won't bottom out until I reach the other side of the log. So that's the purpose for that. I've been bending over here, so I'm going to put these in there so they quit swinging around in front of me. Just like that. log is rolling on me a little bit. Rotten. Well, the tree's nice and solid. That's all rotten and punky. But it's actually really good for making charred material. All that punk wood there. That piece right there, just about perfect. So, all that rotten wood on the outside is not a lost cause. I can use it for other things. Well, there we go. That is a tree dropped and a log bucked in half. Ready to go be put to use at my camp, which is just right there. I can see it. All right, well, thank you for watching. Hope you found that entertaining and informative. Uh, if you did, definitely appreciate hitting that like button, subscribe. Leave a comment, share the video, do all that kind of fun stuff. I would appreciate that. Uh, also, go check out my Instagram channel or Instagram account uh, if you haven't done that. I would appreciate that as well. And until next time, go forth, enjoy yourself, and always come home safe.